Ladies and gentlemen, how are you? This is Freddie Ewing, two-time GM of the year, current Pantheon Cup champion and host of the TPFF KAL show. I hope everyone is having a great Monday. I apologize. I was really sick all weekend, like really sick. I think I slept for like 40 of like the 48 hours. So was a little disheveled and out of it and, you know, barely was even to get all my lineup set in practically. Um, but it was an exciting day in football, obviously, yesterday. Um, first thing I want to talk about really quickly, which um, I didn't get to see, but I got to saw the highlights was, you know, last year, uh, last January um, was a it was a big Monday night game um, at the end of the season to decide a lot of fantasy football championships. Certainly the TPFF KAL championship was going to be uh, decided between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Buffalo Bills. And um, it was at that game that um, I think everyone realized that life was more important than football or fantasy football for that matter. When um, DeMar Hamlin um, suffered cardiac arrest and, um, you know, passed out on the field. And I think everybody was just, you know, shaken. I I know shaken to their shaken to their core on, on what they had just saw. Um, and it was amazing yesterday um, that, you know, DeMar Hamlin returned to the field. I mean, you know, for this guy to get back onto the football field after that was just, um, it was, it was really cool to see. And, um, you know, my hat's off to him, his recovery, uh, great game by the Bubuffalo Bills. And, um, you know, just, it just really cool to see that. And, you know, just kind of remember kind of things that, you know, Hey, you know, there's a lot more to life than football and, um, fantasy football and stuff like that really matters. And it was just, you know, what a great story. Um, getting to the TPFFKAL, pretty um, exciting week. Let's get to the first game. Another number one versus number two for three straight weeks. And once again, from Justin, two cows wins again. They go up to 4-0. and Is anyone going to be able to beat this team? Um, you know, bad, not the best game by TOD. TOD, uh, you know, came in, didn't get much from uh, Tua. Michael Thomas, not really. Uh, no one really big had had a big game on the other side. You know, Justin Jefferson, 23 points. Herbert had 26 points. Uh, Bijan, 19 points. Not the biggest game from FJ2K. Uh, I think four teams would have beat him in the league, but uh, four, but just goes to show you, um, you know, they could run the table. They could go undefeated. They uh, bump up to 4-0. and oh. TOD goes down to 3-1. Uh, and one. and um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Starting to get exciting here. Um, the next one, the Red Sharks. 10th seed, pull off the upset. They beat TDK. Red Sharks improved to 2-2. Two and two. TDK goes to 2-2. Two and two. Um, Let's see, Red Sharks who have been beat up. Didn't score a whole lot of points, but scoring enough to get a, enough done. You know, on the other side is... The other side, TDK, just, you know, uh, zero points out of Addison. Uh, J Jalen Hurts had a great game. Uh, Tyreek Hill had a bad game. Uh, both running backs, Gibbs and ATN didn't really put up much. Um, and and really, you know, not really too much going on for the Red Sharks either. They did get, um, you know, only five points out of Joe Burrow. Big game on Thursday night from David Montgomery. Uh, scored three TDs that really got it done. But, hey, a win's a win. That's what we knew in this league. You know, you just got to win the game of the team you're playing. Um, and uh, the Red Sharks were successful. So, um, great job to the commish. Uh, the one and two indignious F. T going up against the one and two Gronk Donks. This was a blowout from the start. Josh Allen puts up a big day, 44 points. Um, my man over there in Philly, um, Mr. A.J. Brown scores 37 points. He's still got meth cap going tonight. Uh, Brandon Ayuk scores 20 points on the other side. Really nothing from uh, the Gronk Donks except Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore defense. Uh, and did this FTT goes to two and two. The Gronk Dunks go to two and two. A lot of two and two teams. A lot of two and two teams going on. Our next matchup, Chicken of the Cave versus Dunks for Life. This one is not over. Um, it is 126 to 102. Looks like um, 
particular, the cave has everyone done. They're going to score 126 points. So Geno Smith and Tyler Lockett are going tonight. They need 24 points between the two. Um, it can be done. Um, if it does, you know, if uh, Danny ends up winning this game, he's going to get his first one of the season, go to one and three. Sean is going to go down to one and three. So uh, big, big game for both teams. Uh, you know, the difference between two and two. And uh, one and three and zero and four is a big difference between these guys. So this is a uh, big matchup to watch for this evening. Semi-automatic versus the San Patricio Rock Throwers. Um, tough game for the Rock Throwers, but I'll tell you one thing: is C.J. Stroud. This guy's going to be the real deal. Um, maybe he should have been the one number one pick over um, Bryce Young. Stroud looked great yesterday: three hundred and six pass yards, uh, two touchdowns, sixteen rushing yards. Um, it's going to be an uphill battle for semi automatic. It really is. He just got a, you know, got a tough, tough run. On the other side, you got to give it to the Rock Throwers, man. The Rock Throwers are now 4-0. and oh. um, One of two teams that are now 4-0. and oh. uh, I'm going to try to get – I'm really going to try to get Neil on the show this week because it's going to be a fun conversation, and I think he'll probably want to come on this week. Um, big game. Justin Fields is back, 37 points. Um, this guy, you know, he loses Chubb, right? He loses Chubb. He doesn't have his handcuff. I have his handcuff. But he's got this guy a chain, all right? So this guy a chain puts up 28 points after what he had last week. Uh, that's a great offense. I think a chain is going to be um, – that's one of the great things about fantasy football is, you know, it's like you can draft these guys, pay for these guys, and uh, you see some guy named D a chain scoring all these points. Um so uh, the Rock Throwers are playing well. You know, he is uh, my vote for the GM of the year right now. Uh, he's going to get Cooper Cup back uh, next week. Cooper Cup's going to be available for game five. So that's going to be interesting. Um, Jonathan Taylor is hopefully going to be able to help out Samuel Mack as well. Get him going a little bit. And last but not least, Shake and Bake talking all that trash gets blown away by the Virginia Sea Dogs. For the Virginia Sea Dogs are going for the record tonight. They would have got the record. They would have gotten the record had they started Mark Andrews. I don't know why you're starting Evan Ingram over Mark Andrews, but then again, you know, unless you're going to hook him up with Trevor Lawrence, which he didn't start. So then again, I don't know. Brian's method to madness, like I said, in, in uh, poker, I always tell people, you know, beware of the great overthink. And, hey, Brian, you're going to get the win, but you're not going to beat the record, buddy, unless your Seahawks have, like, you know, 12 interceptions. You're not going to get the record. I can promise you that. Um, anyway, uh, tough game for uh, Shake and Bake. They get the 26 points out more. You know, not a great game out of Mahomes. Really didn't get anyone else. On the other side, the Seahawks were just, you know, Kirk Cousins did not have a good game. He only had 15 points. But you look on the other side, Diggs had 36 points. This guy, Puka Nakai, I just traded him on on one leg for um, got Calvin Ridley and, and Hopkins. And, you know, I mean, this guy's here to stay maybe. 163 yards, one reception, uh, one touchdown, nine receptions. Cooper Cup is going to be back there next week, so it's going to be interesting what's going to happen. Uh, CMC, unbelievable game, three rushing touchdowns. He, uh, 106 yards rushing, puts up 48 points. Kyron Williams gets a bounce back, uh, two rushing touchdowns, 103 yards. Um, so, uh, great game by the Virginia Sea Dogs. The Virginia Sea Dogs go up three and one. Shake and bake goes down to one and three. Uh, looks like we're gonna get all the records, and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, we'll have updated playoff odds and everything for you seriously, but you know, really, um, FJTK is now four and zero. That is not a shocker at all. The San Patricia Rock Throw is a big shocker, four and zero. TD TOD is gonna fall down to three and one, still playing very well. Their playoff hopes are right up there. Um, Sea Dogs are gonna move up to three and one as well. And uh, besides that, we really got a bunch of teams that are going to be, uh, you know, two and two and, uh, you know, one and three and oh and four. Um, you know that uh, Zach is going to get back up in there with the team that he's got, but it's really going to be a uh, wide open playoff race. I think, you know, between, you know, the last three or maybe four spots, it's going to be an exciting. So uh, we'll keep everyone up to date with that. Anyway, I'm uh, glad to be back. Um Apologize once again. I'm just super, super sick this weekend and uh, feel great today. Feel like it's going to be a good week. I'll get my fantasy lineups in gear. 
I'm um, going to try to get some people on this week, too. I'm going to try to get this show moving again. We're going to try to get the GM of the Rock Throwers. He's the hot ticket right now. So hopefully, uh, you know, I heard Taylor Swift is going after. Uh, Taylor Swift is down there in Austin trying to find out who the GM of the Rock Throwers is. So hopefully um, we'll figure it out. But everyone, please enjoy tonight's game. The New York Giants take on the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Brian is going for the record. And... Um, Brian's going for the record, and uh, yeah, and Donks for Life, uh, Danny's going for the win. So everyone have a great night. Enjoy the game, and I'll see you back tomorrow night. Bye-bye.